and uh, we're gonna I'm gonna tilt this down a little bit and then I'm gonna come over there on your side of the table hey folks how's it going Chuck Holton here and I'm with Pete Chambers Doc, Lieutenant Colonel retired retired Green Beret Pete Chambers he's with the Spackle Forces <laughs> uh, third group and 19th group, correct? Correct. Okay. And the Special Operations Detachment, uh, Texas, SOD A. Uh -huh. And my last unit, this is great, the three of the 141 on You're the border. Right down on the border. On the border. That's it. That, that, that first battle streamer, it says uh -huh. the Alamo on it. Wow. Uh, so, I, I, most people probably didn't know we've actually had troops down there. Or if right. they did, they thought they were the National Guard or something like that. This was a, a National Guard SF unit. Right? Yes. Okay, and what were you doing down there on the board? So they, they pulled me from the unit and put me in the three of the 141 so that I could be the task force surgeon for Operation Lone Star. Okay, so you were um, a, a enlisted guy, in, infantry. 1983 in enlisted. Back in the day. Back in the day, got, got out, out, went to medical school, and residency. Then came back in after 9 11. Roger. And uh, you've been. 12 deployments to 12 deployments uh three major combat deployments for me uh -huh. and uh but they were all in combat theaters wow that's amazing well uh hopefully they can hear us uh let's see i gotta make sure we got audio otherwise I, I, if we didn't What's we'd have people yelling at us but uh, uh let's see all right audio i think that's okay now we got people on. Okay, folks, let me know if you can hear me. This thing says we've got audio, so we should be good. Looks like their bars are moving. Okay, so as I said, Lieutenant Colonel Pete Chambers, right. surgeon, former Green Beret, uh, and what are you doing now in Texas? So when I uh, was a whistleblower, uh, Senator Johnson asked for some information regarding the Defense Medical Epidemiology Database. A lot to say, right? That was the truth about the injuries that was happening to the shots on the border. That's really what that was. And uh, I got fired from my job as a task force surgeon because I did informed consents for my soldiers. Mm -hmm. uh, that's, that's part of our medicine. It's part of the regulations. It's part of the Hippocratic Oath. It gives them the choice. That's how I got fired. He won rock, paper, rank, right? Two-star lieutenant colonel. Mm -hmm. So I left that job. I went ahead and retired. I had plenty of years in. I had over 20 good years between the Guard, Active, and Reserve, 39 mm -hmm. total on my leave and earning statement. So that's... that's 39 been, years. That's, that was my life. Man. So you've been serving your country basically your entire life. Right. I mean, I had break in service. And, sure, and, sure. You know, but then I mean, had to go to school. Always focused right? on coming back. That right. was my intent. Um, tell me about this trucker convoy that's coming down from Virginia Beach. You're not the commander of this thing. No. Nope. You're just sort of liaising with the local law enforcement, trying to get everything arranged. Keeping it safe. Make sure it'll be safe. So right. so let tell me about what it is, though. Uh, tell our viewers what... what right, I'll, I'll explain to the viewers. So yeah. this thing started off as a ministry, really, in a town called Quimado, Texas, which is between, equidistant roughly, between Del Rio and Eagle Pass. Eagle Pass right now, as you know, is the is the kind of the epicenter for uh, optics right now, optics. The reality is there's still 1,249 more miles of Texas border, so we got to watch out for the end of rounds and all those things. But the, the convoy, is, the intent is when they contacted me and said, could you help us? You know everybody down there. You've been on Operation Lone Star. Absolutely. How can I keep you safe? That's what I'm doing. So uh, the, the convoy leaders, the convoy people that organized this thing, uh, and their intent is to shed light on a, an open border policy that has had second and third order effects to it, to include uh, the fentanyl chemical warfare that's coming across the border orchestrated by the CCP in conjunction with the cartels, trans, tra, transnational criminal organizations, in conjunction with uh, other second and third order effects like human trafficking. Some of that is slave trafficking. Some of that is uh, honestly things that you don't want to talk about on this. Well, I mean, they, we, we understand there's been more than 85,000 children that have disappeared that the government doesn't know where they are. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean all of them are being, tra right. are being right. trafficked. But what that means is we don't know if they're being trafficked we, well, because they're being turned over to people that are maybe not their family, maybe not even acquaintances. Right. 
that have been sponsors, right. but these people could themselves be illegals that are already here. So all of that, is, it ends up with an unknown. Right. And those, those uh, we, until we close the gap, until we investigate, until mm -hmm. we understand, until we uh, analyze that, we will never know. And that's sure. what we're, I believe, that the convoy in, in bringing light to this will bring some, some energy to that right. to close that gap. Well, and honestly, um, they're, 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 there's a dereliction of duty going on to people that, right. by people that have taken the same oath that you and I took to protect this country. Sure. And so that dereliction of duty also has its second and third order effects. I, I've been asking myself about how they can get it, how they can do that. How can they look at themselves in the mirror when they are obviously abdicating their responsibility to secure our southern border, to keep our country safe. Right. And I've been listening to what they are saying, of they being Joe Biden, Alejandro Mayorkas, Anthony Blinken, the pe people that are in charge there. Mm -hmm. And I'm starting to understand that they think differently about what their responsibility is. So, for example, uh, Anthony Blinken was asked by Peter Ducey in a mm -hmm. press briefing, uh, how the government can justify trying to stop Texas from stopping illegals from coming across the border. And he said, well, so that the, the Border Patrol can do their jobs. And Ducey said, well, they wouldn't have to do their jobs if they'd leave these guys alone because they're doing their jobs for them. Mm -hmm. And he said, no, their job is to process people that come into the United States. So the, the Biden administration obviously sees their responsibility here not as our job is to close the border it's mm -hmm. our job is to process right. people who want to come across the border so we're the walmart greeters the the border patrol is supposed to be more like the, the welcome wagon mm -hmm. rather than patrolling the border right, right. And, and that's an apprehension equals counting ahead but they they release them on the street within 24 hours exactly and there are at least that many that are not being apprehended anymore because there's nobody out there to even pick them up. Right. They just keep on walking and go right into the United States. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but it's it's very clear. Mayorkas feels like he has done a public service by allowing mm -hmm. six million people to cross our border under his. his Do rule. we really believe that he thinks that, that? Well, that's what he put in writing when right. they they they. I mean, does he understand? the damage that he's caused? I think he does, but I mean, we could make an argument that he's, he's depraved. His, his mind is, you know, he's been, the, the second, book of Second Timothy says uh, that people who deny God have been taken captive by the devil to do his will. And so, it, the, and it also says in the first chapter of Romans that when people deny God, that God gives them over to a depraved mind, meaning they see good things as bad and bad things as good. So they can't see it as a bad thing anymore. And so when you see people, to, when I see people that are so obviously doing something evil and they hold that they're doing something good, I just have to say they're depraved. That's, that's the only way I can make it right in my mind. Then we could say you shall know them by their fruits. Well, there you go. Right. And, and so yeah. the, the question is, is this even, uh, so, first of all, these people coming down from Virginia Beach and all mm -hmm. over the country now, right. Um, we don't know how many people are coming, but it, it, it'll be a group for sure. A group. Uh, Seventy and, trucks right now, just shy of Mobile. They're okay, so they're in Alabama and they're on their way to what, Louisiana. They're Florida, Port, Florida portion of that trek towards Mobile. Okay. Right. So, um, and they're probably picking up more people all along the way. Uh, some, people some people will peel off because okay. it's their AO. That's where they live, okay. their area of operations, if you will, for their trucking business. Others will continue on, but we'll pick up more as they go through different uh, large areas. So okay. we'll see. Uh, so there, there's been the concern that the government will figure out a way, will, will invent a way mm -hmm. to call this an, another January 6th, to call this an insurrection. And to, you know, we, we've now created a verb here. We, they will be January 6th, you know, by, by yeah, being, yeah, you know, there's, rounded there's... up and, and charged with something stupid. Um, yeah. You don't think that's going to happen. Your, your job is to make sure it doesn't happen. Right, right. If, if we do our job right, and we're and we're completely successful, and and then we say two words, but God, uh -huh. then there will be no inter, uh, there will be nobody infiltrate this operation. However, however, I it, it requires a lot of work, sleepless hours. You said that there have been already agents provocateurs that have been trying to join this convoy to cause trouble when they get down. Here. Absolutely, right upstairs right now. I got nine names on a board. 
Now I'm confirming it. I'm uh, measuring twice to cut once. I'm probably going to measure three times to cut once because we've got to make sure that our that we're wired tight. Because look, this is not my operation officially, but when somebody calls me and says, "Hey, these are these are citizen journalists that are out there on the border right now," mm -hmm. and they're calling me and saying, "Hey, I don't know who to call because I'm afraid to let the DHS guy over here know. I'm, I'm, I don't really know the sheriff because we've lost that relationship mm -hmm. with our sheriffs." There are some great ones in Texas, mm -hmm. great mm -hmm. constitutional sheriffs, Without probably more per capita than any other state. Yeah. And we support them fully. And I'll speak for the convoy as well. They support them fully, all the way to the governor. When the governor is doing the right thing with the constitutional backing of his letter on the 24th of January that he came out and said, here's the articles that I'm talking mm -hmm. about. Now he's not talking about tort law or case law. He's talking about the Constitution. And that, to me, says he's doing the right thing. So they support all those things. The, 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 the concern is, as people tell me this, and I and look, I call immediately and talk to DPS and say, Department of Public Safety, to the regional directors, in your area this week, these people are running around. Now it's your job. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you're going to be here for the duration of this this, this, this First Amendment, you know, gathering. Right. Um, and it's not a. They're not blockading anything. They're not taking over the border. No. They're not going to be fighting the border patrol. Right. I've been talking about this as we've been doing these lives right. that, you know, we need to be careful about amplifying misinformation that's rife all over out there. We, I've seen some things. There was one report that was floating around on Twitter that had a video of a train load of armor that was going right. by. And it said, that, okay. you know, the, yeah. the Texas National Guard is sending tanks to the border. And, you know, first of all, the, the source of that uh, report was a website that's known to be a place where Russian disinformation gets disseminated. So it, we, that right there tells you it's not to. But uh, Ryan Macbeth, who's a great open source Intel guy, went back and looked at the bumper numbers on those things and right. figured out those things are from Tennessee. They're just moving right. them for somewhere for training right. or something, right? And it wouldn't even make sense for them to put armor on the border because Nowhere they don't. To put it. There's, and there's the, the fuel costs and everything would crush <laughs> Logistically. them. Logistically. Right. right. The, so right. Um, we need to be very careful about that. And one of the things I've seen out there online is this sort of at least insinuation that the people that are coming in this convoy are coming to uh, blockade roads to to park their trucks uh, you know along the border to you know stand shoulder to shoulder in the gap and stop the people from coming across the fence uh, to stand up to the border patrol things like that that is not what this is right this is we this can is take not, words and make anything any meaning could because right. perception I'm gonna move is, that camera you keep talking perception is reality okay folks so the way I look at something and the words, let's just take the name of it, takeourborderback.com. Okay, so that's what I'm looking at, take our border back. What do you mean by take our border back? When I say they, well, who's the they? We always like to define things. So the honest truth is, is that uh, if you're nefarious in your intent, you can take anything and switch it around. This is what happened to us when we would go to Sear and they'd say, you know, survival course, and they would say, all right, you know, we're gonna, we're gonna have you point at the map and tell me where, you're, where you went through. Oh, now you're corroborating with the enemy. Mm -hmm. You see how that works? So mm -hmm. we can take anything and turn it around. Right. That's what's happened here. Yeah, have you, have you stopped beating your wife? Right. You know, it's one of those. You, 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 yeah. say, you say yes, they say, oh, you were beating your wife. You say no, you say, they, they say, oh, you're lying. You, you're, you're, not, you're still beating I her. I mean, it's just humankind. We, they, we, these are patterns, we right. see these patterns. And well, and this is, this is how politics works, right? right. So, right. Um, Doc, tell me what you think uh, the, the end state is, you know, what, what's the right thing for our politicians that if we can get somebody in the office that will take this seriously, what do they need to do to put a stop to this? First of all, they have to do their homework, which is going to be what we would call an intelligence preparation of the battlefield. I need to know what, mm -hmm. what the playing field looks like, because most of the people that I've met in D.C., and I'm going to be very straightforward here, uh, don't understand anything from the 40,000 foot you down to the tactical level, the ground, and they, they only understand what's going to get them a vote and how, how polished do I look. Not, I'm not a polished guy. I, I, I've never claimed to be, but I'm an honest guy. And that's what we need them to do. So when we put in those people, we want them to be honest, be straightforward. Some people use the word transparent. I don't like that anymore. It's been over, overused. We, we've seen that through a couple administrations. Um, what, what we need them to do also is to be people of honor. Um, 
and to take an oath, to truly take it. Many of them don't have an oath right now in the Biden administration. Believe it or not, we FOIA'd that. And some of them, their oaths are incorrect or not signed or not dated or not verified or not posted. Mm -hmm. Ours, if we took an oath, for me as a soldier, it was in, it was in my records. Every time that I got a, another rank mm -hmm. or if I came in or if I got out, because I've done that a few you times. You re-enlisted or whatever. Whatever yeah. you do, so you, right. you, you, you take your oath once again mm -hmm. to defend the Constitution not the officers above me. Now, right. the, the enlisted are a little different. They're, they're, it's not an oath to them. It's still to the Constitution, mm -hmm. but, I, but I understand that officers, uh, that I follow their orders. For the officers, it's directly to the Constitution. And only the Constitution. And only the Not Constitution. the administration. No. You know, we just had uh, that Muppet, Corrine Jean-Pierre. <laughs> that was, she said that these three soldiers that were killed in Jordan, mm -hmm. you know, were, were, they, they died fighting for this administration. That's what she for said. this administration. <laughs> it's like... See, <laughs> yeah, there you go. Understanding. Okay. okay, so then our legislators will understand that principle, that there is a constitution that we stand to uphold, that there is a principle that says that uh, we do things legally, morally, and ethically, that we put the mission first. Well, what's the mission here? The mission is to protect the people of our country at the federal level, at the state level, to protect the people of the state. Mm -hmm. This is an invasion. It's That's an right. alligator really close to our canoe right now. Mm -hmm. and. And so that has to be. I think the alligator's in the canoe. It's in at the canoe. At least halfway. Canoe's yeah. sinking. <laughs> no, I, I don't. I'm a glasses half full guy. I, fir I firmly believe that when you tell me that my base camp is surrounded by enemy, I'm going to smile a little bit and go, "Okay, let's go to work." Mm -hmm. But, but it's still going to make me get very serious about Absolutely. where we're at. And that's where that's what we are. We're serious men, women that are conducting a job that is going to bring honor, prestige, and esprit de corps. You like that, mm -hmm. Ranger Regiment? Cool. Okay. So it's going to bring that back to our nation. That's what I believe. Well, let's just hope that that can be done. And that, uh, as I was saying just a moment ago, uh, that the administration we currently have has been doing everything they can to stack the deck in their favor mm. and to ensure that even if a different president gets in, he won't be able to unscrew what has been done right. uh, in this, you know, four years uh, as with Biden as president. Uh, but I, I think it's, it's plain to say that people are fed up, mm -hmm. that this is a major issue in the election. Um, and the, the, the Biden administration has obviously not taken it seriously up until now, but uh, we just saw that in uh, December, President Biden went to Mexico and he met with uh, Manuel Lopez Obrador, the, the president down there. And they made a deal. We don't know exactly the terms of the deal, but we can see the outcome of the deal because now in the last few weeks, the number of people coming across the southern border is declining. It's still a profane number. It's still massive. There are reasons but, for that, but I'll, uh, I'll, okay, I'll, so, I'll explain that. All right, so explain, right now, the optics is on Eagle Pass, mm -hmm. okay? So the reason that the numbers are down at Eagle Pass right now is, is a combination of one quarter of it is the, the triple strand concertina wire that the National Guard is, is saying, we're not gonna let you come in. Three quarters of it is the fact that the levees have been opened, the river has risen quite quite substantially. When uh -huh. I was down there on the 18th of December, we saw 12,000 people come in over 24 hours. That was at Eagle Pass at, at, at Shelby Park. Mm. That's unsustainable. When I was here before in uniform a year and a half ago, it was 12,000 over a period of a week on a busy week, mm -hmm. the whole Texas border. Mm -hmm. So now we got one point doing that in 24 hours. So when that when that river shortly thereafter, so that'd be the 18th of December, probably by the 21st of December, National Guard comes in, we're gonna start taking this over. We increase the flow of the river, that helps, okay? But it's also, it's a dangerous business because mm -hmm. people are trying to cross. So they did it slowly and they got it up. I saw it, I was on my horse, I went out and looked at the levees and that's what's happened. So they're pumping water in, now they've got water this high. This is Texas doing this. Texas is doing this. So they're, they're, they're doing everything they can not just the not just the barbed wire, but they're 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 because some people have been saying, and I I've been saying this myself, right. that some of this is just theater, really, because in in reality, Shelby Park is this much, right. and there's still right. you go half mile either direction, and it's still wide open. It, they, it's a it's a point of it. ingress. It's a point of ingress. It's it's mm -hmm. it's an area where a lot of people can get to that Piedras Negras, to that town. And it's, it's a place where it's easy for them to get there. People are gonna be, uh, con use convenience, and they do as well. And mm -hmm. so do the NGOs that bring these people to the okay. border. 
Okay. So that, that was a convenient place where they had basically made another border crossing where there wasn't one before. Correct, because it's exactly. going to be the whack-a-mole game. As we yeah. start moving troops, they start moving to different well, places. Well, that's what we're seeing. I mean, I, I saw some video from uh, Fox News today of people getting dropped off at the border in Arizona and in California, and they're just coming through Loopville like this, yeah. like there's no tomorrow. Uh, and the, the cartels are managing this. So uh, talking to Oscar Blue Ramirez, that we, you, we both know, down in, uh, he's in Mexico. And he said that, you know, they're directing this convoy. As the convoy comes up from the southern part of Mexico, they get to Mexico City. Mm -hmm. And then the cartel right. there in Mexico City directs them which border crossing they're going to go to right. based on the conditions on the ground. So the cartel is is obviously watching the news and sees what's happening in uh, the, down here in, in Eagle Pass. I think when the convoy, by the time they get down there, they're not gonna actually see a lot of people crossing because they're they're yeah. figuring out that, okay, Shelby Park is not the place to cross right now. Right. And they just go somewhere else. Uh, that's the, the real problem is that this is a holistic issue. And if it's not treated as a, a, the entire border, then we might as well not treat any of it right. because it's, they're, they're still gonna get across. Uh, and so Texas even doing what the, the maximum that they could possibly do, all we're doing is we're sending them to Arizona, New, New Mexico, and, and California. At the height of Operation Lone Star, somewhere mm -hmm. around 10,000 troops, uh, the numbers have changed, and that's mm -hmm. operational security. I won't talk about the numbers, but I'll say that at the height, mm -hmm. the most troops deployed on the US, southern U.S. border since the Spanish-American War. Wow. All right? Wow. Um, and at that time, the numbers were increasing, regardless of the troops, because the troops are not there to stop my, uh, right. migrants. They don't. From they, yeah, they're there to they're immigrants. They're yeah. not. They're not there to do that. So they're there to look for the needle in the stack of needles, mm -hmm. right? Because every once in a while we do find some things, and it's and it's rare, but it does happen. But it's also a presence, and it's also does thwart off thwart some of the nefarious actors. We're talking about fentanyl and guns, because mm -hmm. we know fentanyl and guns come north. Doc, can you do me a favor and close that laptop, please? Thank so you. the fentanyl and guns come north. And uh, sometimes guns go south, mm -hmm. all right? Mexico uh, keeps complaining about that. Now, I've done a deep dive into those guns, yep. and the vast majority of the guns that are captured in Mexico uh, after criminal activity, where the, the government captures them, were actually sold to the Mexican army by the United States, surplus guns, and then they were lost from the Mexican army. They walked away from the Mexican army. So these were not guns that were shipped across from a gun store in the United mm -hmm. States that were, that were sent across. If they look at those those mm -hmm. uh, serial mm -hmm. numbers, those weapons were actually legally sold to the Mexican military, and then they went AWOL from the Mexican Sounds military. Sounds a lot like the Afghan so, army. Yeah, well, that's <laughs> that's what we see when you have corrupt and failed states. Right. right. Uh, so, folks, uh, this is, uh, for those of you that are just joining us, we got a couple thousand people online, and it looks like maybe 900 likes if, would you please go like this video? We can, we're not going to have a lot of time to answer questions today, uh, but maybe a little bit. Uh, so while you're typing your questions, make sure you reach down there and hit that like button. And go, if, if you haven't subscribed to CBN News yet, you're going to want to do that because we're going to be bringing you on the ground reporting from this trucker convoy and lots of other conflicts around the globe, as we always do. Uh, you can go to cbnnews.com or just cbn.com and you can support us there. Uh, we obviously appreciate that. We're uh, donor funded, and so you want to keep us in the field doing this. Uh, how can people find you and your work? I know you've got a Telegram channel. Uh, I don't need any more people trying to find me today, but uh, <laughs> it's getting busy. Uh, you know, drpetechambers.com. It's my drpetechambers.com with an S at the end of Chambers. Okay. Um, it's, it's where I put my lines of effort, the things that we are working on to uh, support our. Uh, municipalities and also our neighbors, neighborhood watch programs, uh, just citizens. It's a, it's really made for that. Uh, and then uh, that you can go to Telegram from there. You okay. Can find it. So I want to back up and sort of reiterate, because what happens is you get people to watch for 10 minutes and then it's a whole group, new group of people. So okay. um, somebody just asked you, what are they protesting? Um, you said this started out as a prayer vigil that they wanted to do. So down I'll, on the I'll clarify for them that it's, it's not a protest. It's a peaceful assembly. Uh, there's no protest signs. There's nothing like that. They're not going into anywhere that, uh, the, that the state is conducting operations. They're staying away from Eagle Pass proper, about 20 miles north of there, going to Kimado to support, really, how it started, a lady that has a ministry down there that's just been getting squashed. So, so they're going to support a lady that has a, what's her ministry? It's a, it's a it's called, women's shelter? Yeah, Crossroad, uh, 
No, she does support a women's shelter, but it's a children's camp is okay, how it okay. started. It's, kids camp. Uh, it's on the website, takeourborderback.com. You can find it. Um, but, but really, the, the peaceful assembly is to bring light to the open border policy that's resulting in what I would say the second, third order effects of that, which is all the things we're talking about, the mm -hmm. nefarious actors, the fentanyl, the human trafficking, the, the stress upon the system. Whatever you want to call that, if it's human osmotic pressure, as mm -hmm. Michael Yan says, or if it is uh, the Clower Piven doctrine, or if it is anything that's going to destabilize or demoralize a nation, mm -hmm. that's a Marxist technique it to is. overtake a country. That's the kind of stuff that they trained us to do in the Green Berets, right. unconventional warfare, and the, the counter to that is called foreign internal defense. Now we're doing what's called domestic internal defense, but we don't have authorities to do certain things, so all we can do is advise and assist. We can't accompany law enforcement until they deputize us. This is very interesting because what you're doing is you're using the skills that you learned in the military in, as a Green Beret mm -hmm. uh, to try to apply that to this Bingo. crisis that we have here on the border and try to figure out how do we how do we do this? Right. Uh, how, how, do, how do we uh, put the pressure back where it's supposed to be on the government mm -hmm. to start doing the right thing for our country? Right. rather than so, what they're doing now. So we assist law enforcement in that respect, or I do, or, or mm -hmm. my guys do, um, but, but really that's more of an advisory role. As far as citizens go, we, we show them in groups. Sometimes I go meet to, you know, like Hayes County, Texas. I go to that concerned citizen group and I say, hey guys, do you, uh, are you, not, not that you are preppers or not, but are you prepared for if something were to happen? We lose a grid for three days or we lose a grid for two weeks. What do you do? Because we fear that which we do not know. If we fear that and, we, and we're prepared and we understand the, 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 prep, the battlefield, what it looks like, what this battle space looks like. I use military terms, it's ingrained in me, I'm yeah. sorry. <laughs> yeah, but, me too. But, but, I, but I wanna understand that I have situational awareness over my atmospherics, the things that are around me, what are affecting me, what is, what's the price of gasoline, what's the price of food, does it look like there's gonna be a shortage, are we gonna run out of these, all these scary things, but when we prepare you ourselves, start preparing like a them. Boy Scout, That's right. you know, uh, when and uh, for me, I come from the north uh, of Texas, north of the Red River. If there's a tornado that destroys my town, they show up in my town and help me. Mm -hmm. So that's only done by the inner and outer rings of security, which is knowing your neighbor, yeah. right? So we can take all these military principles that we know and put them in a, through a god, godly funnel called the Bible mm -hmm. and say, how are we going to bring this out to the people? Like, because faith without works is dead. Right. And I understand that. That's right. And so. We, we, we don't sit you know, on, on the couch on Sunday after church and watch football, we go and help our neighbors. That's right. When you gotta plant a field or when you gotta, you gotta move some cattle, that's what we do, because we enjoy that. That's because there's joy in that. You will know them by their fruit. So all these things are just ingrained in us. And so we try to share that message mm -hmm. because that message is gonna give people, for me personally, mm -hmm. hope. Because yeah. Yeah, hope right. is not a plan but it's gonna give you the hope to understand that yeah. you can develop the plan right. when you seek it. I really believe, I wrote, wrote a book about this called Bulletproof. I, I believe that Christians should be the most prepared and fearless people fearless. on the planet right. because, uh, not, not because uh, of, of, of anything I do, but because I know whose I am. And right. uh, it, without that, if we're just as afraid and just as unprepared as everybody else, we don't have anything to offer people. Uh, when things do go wrong, we don't have anything to, to give them. So we want to be prepared to do that. So on that note, uh, we are holding a, a, a tactical preparedness seminar with a former Secret Service agent, a bunch of former Delta uh, Force operators at Maple Fork Lodge in the second weekend of May uh, coming up uh, this year. And there's still a few slots open for that. So if you want to get uh, more information about that, just send me an email, hotzoneholton at gmail.com. You can also go to my YouTube channel, The Hot Zone with Chuck Holton, and you can follow me over there, and I'll be talking more about that over there. Uh, we'd love to get you out to one of those trainings sometime and maybe do some medical stuff. I that, could do some, really uh, some, some what I call TCCC in the Army yeah, side right. of the house. Yeah, but tactical it, combat it's, casualty care. Yeah, it's right. really just a, a critical incident aid course is what right. that is. Well, that, that'd be really good. Yeah. And, and so we're going to do some stuff like that. And some we're going to have this Secret Service agent who can talk to you about hardening your home, about how to be prepared. And so, again, uh, you just go to send me an email, hotzoneholton at gmail.com and I'll send you the information about that if you're interested. So we've got to go because I've got another live thing, but before we do that, I want to say a prayer. Okay. We always do this at the end of the CBN thing. Um, so let, okay. let's, let's pray for America. 
uh, Lord Jesus, we know uh, all the things we've been talking about are really scary stuff. And uh, it seems like the whole world is falling apart, and especially our beloved United States. But Lord, we know that we are just travelers here. Mm -hmm. This is not our country. And that you are in control and that you can take even people's evil deeds, even the worst choices that people make, and you can turn them for our good. So we thank you for being such a powerful God that you can do that mm -hmm. and that we can have the confidence and security that we don't have to uh, try to get you on our team. We just have to join your team. And mm -hmm. We have to look at where you are working around us and join you in what you're doing, Lord. And we pray that we would have the wisdom and discernment to do that, especially this week as this uh, convoy comes down here. We pray safety for them on the road. We pray for the, the safety for them while they're here. And we pray that their presence would make a difference. Their sacrifice of their time and resources would make a difference for this country, Lord, uh, because there's no better place for us to go. And we pray these things in Jesus' name. In Jesus' amen. name. Amen. All right. Thank you, folks. God bless you. And we'll be on again tomorrow. All right. uh, again, you, this is Dr. Pete Chambers. And you can find out more about him where? Uh, DrPeteChambers.com. DrPeteChambers.com. I'm the commander of the Remnant A-Team. The Remnant A-Team. Go check it out.